I know there must be many thoughts going through your mind right now. Is this the right place for me? Do I belong here? But let me assure you that we see something in you. Something you may not even see yourself. Even if you do have x-ray vision. Congratulations, and welcome to Godolkin University. You know when Golden Boy flames on his clothes burn off? You're making me out just a little bit. It's like a big, fiery sea cucumber. Golden Boy, Jordan, Andre, they're going all the way. They could save thousands of people. I was coming up with your superhero name. You want to hear it? Bloody Marie. That's terrible. Okay, Coagula. Even worse. I'm not going back to the f***ing woods! There's some weird shit going on. Who else have you told? Nobody. Don't say another word about this. What's going on? It's like so nice. There are evil people at this school. This is way bigger than us. We need to make this right. This is your shot at real power. Remember, no tiny action hero shit. Get it, got it, good. Sweet Jesus. Digging for the truth is a rush. This is just a tiny bit fucked, isn't it? Don't answer that, it's rhetorical. It's just a matter of time before they find out about everything else we're doing. If the woods is exposed, we all have a big, potentially fatal problem. It's like so. I'm up. One thing that is really apparent now is that we are all up. It's like so. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This will be my new Boys Gen V trailer. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs and references. They confirmed they're doing Tech Knight from the comics and a bunch of other characters like Soldier Boy, played by Jensen Ackles, is coming back. So I'll explain what's going on. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. I will do videos for the episodes. It's dropping later this month, so I'll explain the schedule later in the video. This time they begin the trailer with Clancy Brown's character and he's playing a Professor X parody named Richard Brinkerhoff and within the universe of the boys he's just pretending like his front is that he's a professor of crime fighting at this university but the whole idea is that the university is just a front for Vought to find more Compound V superheroes that they can use to make more money off of. Even though Godolkin University isn't from the comics, they're doing a bit of an X-Men parody here. There is an X-Men parody in the comic book version of the boys. They're called the G-Men team, led by an evil version of Professor X, basically. Clancy Brown's Professor X type of character does have Compound V superpowers. They didn't say exactly what they are, but if he's meant to be a Professor X parody, then they might be mental abilities. But basically the idea with the spinoff here is they have this university called Godolkin University, God U, which is meant to be a Vok controlled school that they use to pick through all the Compound V babies to find one that they can actually use to make more money off of. They're building the show as a little bit like X-Men, like Xavier's school for gifted youngsters in the boys universe. So X-Men in the boys universe mixed with the Hunger Games as they're all fighting for a chance to join the seven. And the whole Hunger Games thing is the idea that they're basically killing each other off. Last person standing gets a chance to join the seven. The whole idea in the boys universe is that with very few exceptions across history, parents will submit their children for compound V testing because at least at the present day, compound V only really worked on children. When adults would take it, it would just wind up making them explode. Recently, they changed that with a temporary compound V. Like now you see adults being able to take it and it's a slightly different form of the compound V. But all the older children and all the adults who would have taken it with the exception of Ryan and Homelander were basically dosed with Compound V when they were children as part of experiments just to become part of Vought's testing to see if they could make a better version of the formula or if they could make a superhero that they could make a ton of money off of. That was the real reason like hey you submit your child you have a chance to earn a lot of money off of them they could become really rich as a superhero but really they just wanted them as cannon fodder for their testing. If they wound up developing really cool or really marketable, useful superpowers, that was just a bonus side effect. The reason why Homelander was an exception is because he was actually artificially created in a lab. They took genetic material from Soldier Boy and tried to refine his DNA to make an even more powerful superhero, and that became Homelander. So the idea is that across history, you have all these different people secretly submitting their children for testing to get Compound V when they're babies. 
What winds up happening is that a lot of them don't develop any kind of useful superpowers or they have really weak superpowers that Bot doesn't really care about or they just wind up being failures. They're either cast aside or the parents can't deal with them because their powers are too out of control or they're too powerful. They would get sent to places like Red River Institute, which were basically like all the compound B babies that nobody could control. That's actually where one of the main characters comes from here, Marie Moreau. It looks like her power is blood manipulation, veins, arteries, manipulation, and a regenerative healing factor. Talking about Marvel DC references, like all the characters are meant to be comic book references or parodies in some way, she'd be a little bit more like Carnage from the Marvel Universe based on the way he uses his powers differently from Venom and the other symbiotes. You could also make an Avatar The Last Airbender bloodbending reference too. And they're actually doing a Netflix live action Avatar The Last Airbender, which I'll be doing videos for. I've already done a trailer video for that, so I'll post a link down in the description below. The whole idea with Tech Knight is he's being played by Derek Wilson here. You see him in the trailer briefly. It's like a short scene where he talks about the rush, quote unquote. I was hoping that Jeffrey Dean Morgan would wind up being their Tech Knight, but he's actually playing a totally different character during season four. Within the world of the comics, he's meant to be a parody of both Marvel's Iron Man and DC's Batman, but the showrunner said for the purposes of the show versus the comics, they lean more in a Batman direction on the TV show. Something about them feeling like Batman was more ripe for parody than Iron Man's character, even though they're both pretty ripe for parody. The whole idea with Batman and Iron Man is that they're similar in that they're both billionaires that use their technology to make themselves superheroes, a bunch of gadgets, a bunch of armor, instead of having natural compound V abilities like other superheroes in the boys universe, like Homelander. He's a huge character in the comics, but he's super funny in a very, very disturbing messed up way. Tech Knight, as in technology, like Iron Man, Tech Knight has no natural powers. All of his abilities come from the gear that he invents, just like Iron Man. In Knight, as in the Dark Knight, and in the past, he had a sidekick named Laddie, who was a version of Robin, who also left him when he got older to become a version of Nightwing that they call Swingwing on the series. Just like Iron Man and Batman, he's super rich and has his own back cave full of weapons and machines that he uses. This is a clip from season one where they're actually talking about the Tech Knight character during the Superhero Partners support group for people that were injured while they were getting busy with superheroes. Uh, some days are harder than others, obviously. Uh, you know, the other day I, I wanted to talk to my friend about all this, but I couldn't. I think that's why this group is, is so great and so important. I know it's wrong to feel angry. After all, Tech Knight saved me. I just wish he'd been a, a little more gentle with my spine. It's about acceptance, isn't it? Letting go. There was also a separate Tech Knight clip of The Deep doing a commercial talking about making things more eco-friendly and referencing that he made Tech Knight make his Batmobile more eco-friendly. Okay. I mean, you take Tech Knight's Night Racer, had a carbon footprint the size of a 727. Thing literally shot fire. As funny and messed up as all that was, like it gets even worse as the scene goes on, the way we're actually introduced to the Tech Knight character for the first time in the actual story was way crazier. He's in a therapy session right at the beginning of volume two because he has a compulsive addiction to getting down with anything that he lays his eyes on, even inanimate objects. And it was because of that problem that he was kicked out of one of the other major new superhero groups called Payback. That's a group that's led by Stormfront, also one of the new characters during season two. They go on a mission to take down this hostile army in a foreign territory. But as they're flying back to their headquarters, he starts to stare at his teammates butt and just can't stop thinking about it. He winds up trying to get with him mid flight in the air and everybody freaks out. Stormfront and the others immediately kick him out of the Payback team. Remember way back during episode one when Starlight was named as the new member of the Seven? It was a big deal. Originally, that was supposed to be Tech Knight. He was going to become a member of the Seven, but Vought American found out about his little quote unquote problem and vetoed his membership on the spot. Like I said, Jensen Ackles' Soldier Boy is coming back, but they didn't say what he's going to be doing during the series and how he comes back if he's still meant to be in that deep freeze prison where they have him in cryo, kind of locked up, so to speak, for all time or if it's some sort of flashback or some sort of training footage that they use or footage that he filmed, kind of like those funny Captain America ads that they did during Spider-Man Homecoming that they were forced to watch, that they made Steve Rogers film when he was unthawed and became part of the Avengers. Like, you know what, why don't you do this for the government? Film a bunch of these tutorials for these kids. Right after The Boys season three ended, Jensen Ackles did say he could come back, but they'd have to be kind of twisty about the way they brought him back. I think he was just referring to them putting him on ice, so to speak. 
There are a bunch more crossover characters from The Boys Season 4 that will star during this. They did say that it would directly set up The Boys Season 4. I think that has a lot to do with the Victoria Newman footage during the trailer and them seeding the whole idea that she's trying to take over the White House. And at least before the events of last season, she was working with Stan Edgar and it was all part of Vought's grand play to take over the White House so they could influence public policy and gain real power, basically take over the government slowly. Then she called an audible and kind of went her own way with it, but she's still technically kind of on the side of Vought, even though she's very self-interested. Victoria Newman is based on Vic the Veep from the comics. It was a male character in the comics, but the whole idea is that he becomes the vice president of the United States, so it sounds like they're headed in the same direction with Boys Season 4. The whole difference, though, is that by the time they actually get the story into the White House, like by the time the boys' characters are in and around the White House, it's almost the end of the comic book story, and they made it sound like the show could go way beyond that, like it'll go more than five seasons, but we'll see about that. These new Gen V episodes are meant to take place between the events of The Boys Season 3 and Season 4, though. There's this place they keep referring to as the woods, like the characters are yelling, I'm not going back to the woods, like it's some terrible place where they get experimented on. If we're talking about an X-Men parody here, that might be their version of the danger room, but it's just a place where Vought's scientists experiment on them. They're supposed to drop the first three episodes on the first day, and then it's weekly after that, but it'll be eight episodes like the regular boys season. So I'll do more videos when we get a little bit closer. They'll probably release a little bit more footage. If there's any more Easter eggs or references that you spotted in the trailer that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up too. My Ahsoka episode 5 video will post next week after they release it. Click here for that. I'll update the link as soon as I post that. And click here for all my other boys trailer videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.